I'm Zandra Ui, speaker, author and coach on happiness and together with me today is Jade Lee and Rosalie Lin. They are co-founders of the Artisans Haven, a one-of-its-kind digital mall here in Malaysia that supports and promotes local artisans. Here with us is Miss Chi Li Har from Go Cheats. She creates the most beautiful products, hand-painted. And yes. what's amazing is that you used to be in the banking industry and now you're in the creative industry. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that it's very different? Yeah, I mean like um, some people like to call me uh, the lady with two brains. So at uh, different times of the year, I, I guess, or the day, I sometimes exercise my left and sometimes exercise my right brain. So I'm still uh, full-time in banking. I still spend a considerable of time in banking. I sit on a couple of boards in uh, financial institutions. So how much time do you spend like doing creative stuff and gold now? cheeks and creation of products? Okay, if I play in percentage terms, 70% uh, on the creative side now. And does it bring you a lot of like excitement and joy? In yeah, that's the only reason I left banking two years ago. <laughs> to actually really truly focus on this. Because I've been painting since 2011, back in the day when I was working in Singapore. It was part of my meditation, it was part of my therapy. Like it's very therapeutic for you after work. You know, Correct. Start. But yeah. who taught you? Like self-taught? Yeah, what? yeah. I learn best if I activate on it. So I'm not a very good student in that sense. I make a very bad student because I question everything, <laughs> right? And every process. So it's better that I... Self-study. Self-study, spend more money, throw away more things, you know. At the beginning, it was very painful. Lah. The amount of pain I have to throw away, the amount of canvas I have to throw away. I think the garbage man must be happily taking my art home. <laughs> so how long was it from when you were just doing it as a, like a therapy kind of activity to when you actually started selling your products? Yeah, it has been a journey. 2011 I started in Singapore. Uh, I had uh, two exhibitions. The first one is 100% uh, for charity and it was sold out like, for charity. Obviously everybody wants to buy and charity, right? The second one was a total flop, yeah? Maybe because the art series wasn't appealing or the people I chose to invite for the night didn't want to spend. How whatever. did you feel? Like, was that this <laughs> drop of like, you know, like so crestfallen? Did you feel very disappointed or you felt like, you know what, it's fine? Uh, it was a humbling experience. I didn't expect it uh, because the first one was a sold out, but it was a charity one. So I thought that let's do one commercial one and really test like what I'm worth, right? So it, it was a flop, right? A, a bit demeaning uh, in a sense, uh, but I'm good at internalizing because I understand myself really well. That is one of the good things about me. So then I say, hey, I either have to improve the style, the audience, you know, a few things I can do, but a lot of things I cannot help. So don't sweat the stuff I cannot help. So improve on myself and my journey. Then I came back to Malaysia. So 2013 and 2015, I had two sold outs uh, wow. exhibition. Yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> So I didn't give up, I didn't give up, which is really good. 2013, I did the first e-auction uh, art. Uh, I put 24 pieces out uh, and 25% I gave to charity. La. And that was a sold out, which is good. And people from like Thailand, Singapore, even Philippines and Malaysia bought from me, which is like, oh, so much support. Online is great because it's yeah. accessible to clients everywhere. Correct. Uh, the only downside is that because I, I, it was going to be online, so what I did, I had to paint on uh, acid-free paper. So instead of uh, canvas and frame, and it's so expensive to Korea, mm -hmm. it's so expensive. So that was also a first for me, doing on acid-free paper. Learning. Yeah, so two, two years after that, one of the Islamic banks asked me to do like just five pieces and uh, 20 or 25 percent, whatever I feel, to give to a TV, soup kitchen. I see. Yeah, yeah. So I cut a 27 percent check mm -hmm. for, for that and that was also a sold out. Then after that, uh, my journey evolved. So I was in Melbourne, my elder daughter, that time first year doctor, I saw a scrub shoes, she was going to work in the scrub shoes. Oh my god, I see your scrub shoes look so awful. And she said, no choice, scrub shoes are like that. I came back to Malaysia, I painted a few pairs of scrub shoes, very nicely painted and sent over to her. Wow, she put on the social media, exploded. Everybody <laughs> loved it. Yeah. Was that when Go Cheeks was boring? Uh, that was the start of uh, Chicks Limited Edition. Ah, so then uh, over the next one and a half years, I painted like almost 300 pairs of shoes. Each of them personalized one. And then some people, the shoes must match with bags. So I started to have bags as well. But it was an insane one and a half uh, years because I could only paint 
after work or during uh, weekends. I was just going to say, this yeah. time you have a full-time job yeah. working in banking. I know. And what was once therapeutic has now become sort of like a mini business. Yeah. Were you feeling stressed at that time? I was really enjoying it for the one and a half years. So at that point, after one and a half years, I was thinking, wow, so, so much already. And I got so many pictures to show for it already. I said, hey, I, I don't think I want to paint anymore. So I had to put a stop to that. It's very time consuming to paint per pair of shoes, no? not easy, you know, because each layer you've got like three layers per shoe, no. So how did that evolve to you deciding to quit your full-time banking job and ah. going full-time into creating paintings and art and products and yeah. bow cheeks? Okay, a very good question. Let me ponder that. So after painting the shoes and the bags, right, the personalization is not only expensive for the customer, but it's very time consuming for me. Then I said, hey, how to scale this, right? You cannot scale something that is trading time for money. Correct. Correct. I have very good friends who will say that, hey, Chi, I like your art, la, but I only got that many walls. Can you do something that I can wear? Mm. Can you do an art that I can wear? Then I was thinking, what, I paint on your jeans. Uh, that is personalizing again. Then I said, ah, why don't I print? So then I do smaller pieces. Mm. Uh, then every art piece, I digitize it, and then I print it on fabric. So then I came up with shawls, scarves, twirlies, kimono, not and stuff that like that. And that was a bags. completely different business though. Correct. Like this was production, manufacturing, and then your yeah. distribution and customer service. Yeah. Did you enjoy all of that? Yeah, at first it was like one, 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 one man show, one, one man, man show. show. Yeah, one man show. But a good thing about one man show is that I learned really a lot. Mm-hmm. Really like back end to whatever, mm-hmm. from talking to each and every of my artisans to the client are the most important part, right? And a little bit on social media. I was mm-hmm. so hopeless at that last time, right? <laughs> but I refuse to advertise. Why? Because you just prefer the word of mouth and... Um, firstly, I believe that my brand is a very authentic brand, okay? And I would like to grow organically with people who love authenticity rather than people buy as an item. Uh, I always believe that if you do not know me and don't understand my journey, you're just buying an item. And I think there's no stickiness in there. The loyalty, the the brand awareness, the you know me and you kind of yeah. thing is not. See, Rosalie is now mm. a chickster. I think because she knows me. Oh, <laughs> chickster! <laughs> hashtag chickster. Yeah. That's a really sticky name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe I'm still young as a brand. I still want to grow that way. As a human being too. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, you're too kind. So that's how Go Chicks has spawned. So Go Chicks can now reach a lot of people. Because Are you got, mainly online? Yeah, I have a website called gochicks.com but uh, it's, it's very hard business to drive traffic to a specific website. Mm. Right? It's very difficult. All right? Let's be honest about it. Social media platform is still the more reachable one. So I'm quite active on social media and I've got some level of following on Instagram. Instagram I find quite fickle, at least for my business. Facebook is more relational a bit. Get a chat with your customers ah, to build a relationship. Correct. And then people bother to read your comments a bit and understand you day by day. You know? Different platforms serve different crowds. Yeah. yeah. yeah so what are your plans um, for Gojix in the future? Where do you want to bring it? Or are you just taking it a day at a time as long as you enjoy doing this? Let's just see where it takes you. Uh, I think more the latter. However, uh, as a banker, we all know we need to have some level of strategy, right? Or else it's like <laughs> game of chance, no la, right? Because we have been quite really strategic about this. Even though the way I explained to you, almost like we had a string of accidents that one led to another. I never believe in that. I think all our stars are actually drawn together just because we are very ready when the opportunity did come. Yeah. Luck is when opportunity meets hard work. Correct, mm. yeah. And also for us to recognise, like for example, when I saw my daughter's ugly scrub shoes, I could have just ignored it and yeah. just have a nice holiday in Melbourne. But I, I wanted to do something about it. And when I exploded on her social media, I thought, hey, what does it mean? Then I thought about it and hey, could it be something? You took the opportunity. Correct. But first you had to do it. You had to have the purpose that drive the compulsion to actually paint your daughter's shoes. Correct. That was when this whole journey started, right? Correct. Before that, it was just something you did for fun. Yeah. And then after that, you realized that, hey, you know, this can actually not just be enjoyed by me, mm-hmm. but be enjoyed by other people around me Correct. as well. Correct. And I think, for example, the customization, the Chicks Limited Edition, where I had to paint per bag per person. Mm. I mean, how much skill can there be? How much joy can you spread? Limited, right? I mean, your, your guru and happiness, right? <laughs> For me, it's like I would like to have concentric circles, many, many concentric circles of joy and happiness everywhere, right? So, you can't do it like one-on-one, not too much anyway. 
So Go Cheeks was born because of that mantra. Yeah. How to spread that? I think from here on, I think you're just going to reach more people. And I think that, you know, with your kind of vibe, and strategy and mindset and your ability <laughs> to reflect and improve on products I feel like you know the only way to go is up oh, yeah. thank you. Really. it's so lovely to meet you I've only seen all your work online and not I see the colorful person so yeah it's really an honor pleasure's mine be happy always yes <laughs> And I hope that you guys watching this too will feel inspired by the stories that you've heard. Hear the story, see the passion, and shop at the Artisan's Haven. Yes, yes. Is, Thank that, you. is that right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. correct. This is a showcase, a digital mall of Malaysia's best local talents. You can head over to the website to check it out. In the meantime, I hope that you too will be inspired to create anything in your life that brings more joy and more happiness. Till the next time, from all of us, be happy always. Bye!